So welcome back. So by the end of the video, I'd hopefully convinced you that if the Weierstrass M-test criterion is satisfied, then the series of functions does converge pointwise everywhere over the domain D, and we'll call its pointwise limit function the function f. What I now want to do is show that the series of functions, i.e. the sequence of partial sums of functions, converges uniformly to that limit f. So I've drawn a picture here to help us understand what we need to prove. So here is the domain, d. There is our limit function in black, f. And then if we're going to prove that this series of functions converges uniformly to f, then I need to show that whatever epsilon you take, you can draw the epsilon interval around your limit function f, which is here in blue, this tube. This is the above uh, the line that is above f by an amount epsilon, and this is the line that is below f by an amount epsilon. And then I need to show that there is a term in this sequence of partial sums such that that term and all terms beyond it are always inside my epsilon interval around my limit function f. And of course, that term in the sequence of partial sums will be a partial sum, so it will be the sum from n is equal to 1 to big N of fn, and I've shown it here in red, it needs to be inside my blue tube around my limit function f. And all of the higher partial sums, so if you go bigger than n here, uh, they all need to be inside there too. That's what I need to show. And of course, the way that I'm going to do this is because I know that all of the terms in my series of functions are bounded by these m values, and I know that this series of m values converges and converges to this value l. This is what I'm going to have to use in order to prove this. So what we're going to do is we're going to let epsilon be greater than zero, and I need to now show you how to find a term in this sequence of partial sums of functions such that it and all the things beyond it are within this epsilon distance of the limit function f over the entire domain. Now just a note, I've changed the letter that I'm using here. I was calling it the big nth term, but I think that's going to get confusing because we're using the lowercase n here. So I've instead going to call it the big kth term, and then we'll have for all little k greater than or equal to big k that all of those little kth terms in my sequence of partial sums, they will all be within the epsilon distance of the limit function over the entire domain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that this series of the m values converges and converges to this finite value l. So writing what this series is formally out, it's again a sequence of partial sums, a sequence of real numbers. Um, so we'll have m1, then m1 plus m2, then m1 plus m2 plus m3, and it will go on. And this is a convergent sequence to the value l. So now what I can do is use the fact that this converges to say that with the epsilon that I've got here, there must be a kth term in this sequence, which is the kth partial sum of m values, such that it and all the things beyond it are within epsilon distance of l, i.e. are within the epsilon interval around this l value. Now bear with me with this next step, because it might not be immediately obvious why I'm doing what I'm doing now. I'm doing this in order to formally justify something that you might just intuitively leap to, but which does need formal justification. So what I am now doing is I've taken this sequence of partial sums of m values, and I'm actually going to cut off all of this part, the first k minus 1, finitely many terms of that sequence. I'm going to get rid of them, and I'm going to start the sequence now from my kth term here. So the sum from n is equal to 1 to k of the mn's, and then it continues on. So the next term, the second term, is now the sum from n is equal to 1 to k plus 1 mn. Uh, so we've kept the sequence exactly the same in the tail end. We've just got rid of the first finitely many terms. Now, getting rid of however many finite number of terms you want from the front of your sequence does not overall change what your sequence converges to. So cutting off this front bit makes no difference. It still converges to L. As long as you keep the infinite tail the same, it doesn't matter how many terms you cut off from the front. So 
my new sequence that I've got here still converges to L. And as I say, don't get angry with me. You might be wondering, why are you doing this? I'm doing this to formally justify something that does need to be formally justified, that you might just have intuitively have leapt to immediately from this, but does need a formal justification. And note that every term in my new sequence is within the epsilon interval around this L value, because all of the terms now in this sequence are from the tail end of this sequence that was picked because it was all within uh, epsilon distance of the limit value L. Now I'm going to do another manipulation to this sequence, and it's going to be subtracting another convergent sequence away from it. And because this is a convergent sequence and I'm going to subtract off another convergent sequence, the thing that I will get will also be a convergent sequence. So what sequence am I going to subtract away? It's going to be a really simple sequence. It's going to be a constant sequence. So it's going to be the constant sequence where all the terms have this value, sum from n is equal to 1 to k of mn. So that's some real number. So take a sequence, I haven't written this out, where every single term has that value. That's a convergent sequence. Its limit, of course, is that constant value that the sequence is. Um, so now I've got one convergent sequence, and I'm subtracting off another convergent sequence. The thing that you end up with by the algebra of limits will also be a convergent sequence. And this is what you end up with when you subtract that constant sequence away from this one. So that first term is now going to be zero, because you've got this minus this. And then the second term, you're now just going to have the sum from n is equal to k plus 1 to k plus 1 of mm, which of course is just mk plus 1. Then this third term will be the sum from n is equal to k plus 1 all the way now up to k plus 2 mn, so it'll be mk plus 1 plus mk plus 2, and then it'll continue on, it'll be mk plus 1 plus mk plus 2 plus mk plus 3. Now of course this is going to be a convergent sequence and what's its limit going to be? It's going to be the difference between the limit of the two sequences. So the limit of the sequence we were subtracting off was um, L, and the thing that we were taking away its limit was just the sum from n is equal to 1 to k of mn. So the limit of this new sequence that we've got here by subtracting uh, that constant sequence away from this one is just going to be L minus this. Now think about what this value is going to be. Sum from n is equal to 1 to k of mn, that was in this tail part of the sequence, so it was inside the epsilon interval around L. Now we don't know whether it was below L or above L, so what we, we can't say whether this difference will be positive or negative, but what we can say is that the modulus of this difference is going to be less than epsilon, i.e. that whatever this is, it is within the epsilon interval around zero, so it's somewhere in this region here from negative epsilon to epsilon, and it can't actually obtain these two boundary values, it's somewhere properly contained between them. So now, Scrap that first term from this sequence here. I've already explained that you can get rid of finitely many terms from the front of the sequence and it doesn't make any difference. And then just have the remainder of the sequence. And you can see that what we've got here, we could write out as a series and we'd write it out like so. Sum from n is equal to k plus 1 to infinity of mn. And that series is now a convergent series we know. And its limit, which we can call L tilde, we know is between negative epsilon and epsilon in this epsilon interval around zero. And this is the intuitive result that you might have just immediately concluded from this step here, but which did need formal justification, and that's the reason that I've gone down this route. So intuitively, if this sequence of partial sums has got within epsilon distance of this limit value L, then the remaining part of the series, so the sum from n is equal to k plus 1 to infinity of the mn's, this thing must be in size, i.e. its modulus must be less than epsilon. That's the intuitively what we've done here. But it did need more formal justification because this isn't just a mere sum, it's the limit of a sum. So it did need more careful justification for us to be able to write what I've written here, and this is the more careful justification. Moreover, I could take any k prime that is greater than or equal to my big k. I was going to use little k, um, however, little k looks exactly the same as big k, so I've called it instead k prime. So I could take any k prime that is greater than or equal to my big k here, and 
the exact same conclusion holds true for k prime, that if I replace this k here with k prime, sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity of mn, the value that I end up with here, it will be convergent and it will converge to something with modulus less than epsilon. And the reason is, all of the justification I've done here would work just as well if I went further along and used my sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime, uh, where k prime is greater than k. Uh, so again, I could cut off all the things that were ahead of k prime in my sequence, and then I'd get this, so now I'll replace uh, the k here with k prime, and then I can subtract off the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime mn, which is a constant sequence that will converge, and it will converge to that value, and then I'll end up with something exactly like this, except that now we'll have k primes here. I can then get rid of my 0 there, and this sequence will converge. It will converge to the value L minus the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime mn, and because k prime was further along, it will also be within this epsilon interval of L, and therefore the difference between L and the sum from n is equal to 1 to k prime of mn will have modulus less than epsilon. And then I can just rewrite the sequence that I've got there as a series, so sum from n is equal to k prime plus 1 to infinity mn, and that will have a limit that is modulus less than epsilon. So we'll have a break here, and in the next video, what I will do is claim that my big K works for the uniform convergence criterion of the series of functions to my limit function f, i.e. that if I go in the sequence of partial sums of the function, of the series of functions, so this sequence of partial sums here, and I go along to the kth partial sum, so f1 plus f2 plus f3 all the way up to fk, then that partial sum and all the partial sums beyond it will be within the epsilon distance of my limit function f.